the Bible is deliberate in talking about where we stand on purpose because God wants us to go to heaven. And he said, there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. You can run and hide. You can have money. You can have wealth. You can have land. You can have fame. You can even be over an entire nation or a continent and have no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. You got to get to Jesus. And I'm lifting up my Bible because the scripture says this is the word of God. And that Jesus Christ is the word. He lived here and he proved what this Bible says. Every jot and tittle while he lived here, he brought it right up to par. And the end of time will come just exactly like it's written. I don't understand everything about the end of time, but I understand he's coming back for me. <laughs> and not for me only, but for all them that love his appearing. And so if you get that much of it down, you won't get bogged down. You'll get raised up to the glory of the Father. If you look with me this evening to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 1, we'll begin reading. It is a delight to have you in the house of the Lord. So much. I'm so thankful that you don't only come to church just when the sun's shining just right, but even when the wind's blowing. You, still, you can still get out. Be in the house of the Lord. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 1 we'll begin reading. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. This is the charge. <clears throat> Preach your opinion or whatever your church believes or whatever you think people would be user friendly with. I don't know if you can read what that says, but this is a direct quote from the King James Version Bible in the New Testament. And he said, This is the charge I give thee, O Timothy. Preach the word. Be instant in season. You can't preach something you don't know nothing about. Be careful to ingest the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you've got a freezer full of beef and the makings for flour tortillas and you don't fix it and eat it, you'll starve to death. If you're starving, call me and I'll come help you eat it and I'll, I can fix the tortillas. <laughs> Shouldn't there be a hunger pain in this culture today that's so full of Hollywood and politics and pure baloney? Shouldn't there be a hunger for something that's reality and true? That's this word right here. Woo! <clears throat> Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He's not talking about being mean, but don't let sin go by without attacking it. We're doing everything we can to kill cancer. Sin cancer, yes, the stuff that takes you to hell. Doesn't matter what grade it is, S-I-N goes down. Righteousness goes up. Yes. Woo! First number three, and this is, this is what I'm disturbed about this morning. I want to talk to you about. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, Tell us how to grow a big congregation. Tell us how to make people happy. <clears throat> Tell us how to be user friendly in a culture that hates God. Don't use the blood. Don't scream and holler. Don't preach. <laughs> Bring them coffee and donuts. Whew. I love when you shout. <laughs> Verse number four says, and they shall turn away their ears from the, look at this word, T-R-U-T-H. They shall turn away their ears from the truth. Friends, the truth is the word of God. What I, my opinion is meaningless or yours. I don't care if you've lived for God for a hundred years 
and you say something the Bible doesn't say, if you're saying it is God's word, you're lying. God's word is straight away. We've got to stay there. And shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things endure affliction. I guarantee you if I throwed a snake out there in the midst of you, you'd go looking to see which way he went. The Lord said, put your watching on. Look what he says here in verse number five. Watch thou in all things. You got to be careful, friends. This devil I'm talking to you about to sneak up on you. He don't mind letting you have an anger fit every once in a while or say a word that shouldn't be said or act in a way that shouldn't be acted. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing. Savior, we humbly bow in your presence and we thank you for one great gift, the Holy Bible, that gives us instructions on how to get to heaven. We praise you, Lord, that it is so real that it's spoken as Jesus, that this word became flesh and lived among us. We praise you for that, Lord, through Jesus Christ. We love you so much for loving us and your willingness to forgive us. Lord, help us now to be so caught up in the presence of your word, Lord, and your spirit and your driving force that we could be a difference in this world. We could love people enough to help them make it all the way to the portals of glory. For this we'll be grateful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. There's another passage of scripture I'd like to read to you out of 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse number 5. 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse number 5. And while you're, while you're turning there, I want to give you my text. <clears throat> I want to preach to you from the thought, itching ears, hate truth. Here in 1 Kings 22 and verse number 5, I'm going to do an inductive study with you on people who has itching ears for something besides what truth is. 1 Kings chapter 22, we're going to start reading in verse number 5. Ahab is at the close of his leadership as the king of Israel. Jehoshaphat has come over to his kingdom and they're visiting Jehoshaphat's the king of Judah and uh, <clears throat> Ahab has invited who is a Ahab's a very wicked king he's invited Jehoshaphat who is a godly man to bring Judah with him and they're going to fight against Syria together and here the story picks up in verse number 5 and Jehoshaphat said unto, unto the king of Israel, which is Ahab, inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. If we're going to go to battle, let's, let's talk to the Lord about it. Before we go out there and get 100,000 of us killed, let's see if God wants us to go or not. I think that's sound reasoning, don't you? Yeah. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Now Jehoshaphat's been around these prophets a long time, and so he asked a question of King Ahab in verse 7. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? He said, my neck's going to be on the line too. I'd like to make sure that these 400 prophets really say what God said. And not just telling you what you want to hear. Woo! Yes. Friends, you better be careful of a preacher. TV, in the church, or on the street. That tell you what you want to hear without telling you where you're going to go. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, 
There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him. I'm talking to you about itching ears. Hate truth. This man's been a devil his whole, his whole kingship, Ahab. He's wicked as he can be, but he's got 400 prophets that belong to God saying, you go up, King Ahab, and everything's going to be all right. Friends, you better be careful about this user-friendly gospel that says you can live in an open relationship with another man or woman without monogamy, and you can still go to heaven. You won't get there according to what this Bible's got to say. You can't cuss everybody in your tank and go to heaven somewhere. There's got to be some, woo, I love when you're shouting now. But I hate him, for he doeth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. Well, he's been nothing but evil. Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. He knew it was dangerous to talk about the prophets. Touch not my anointed and do my, do my prophets no harm. He said, Ahab, be careful. You're talking, you're not just talking against a man. That man represents the voice of God. Let not the king say so. Friend, somebody stand up and read you the Bible. Don't you fight that. You go find out if it's rightly divided. And if it is, you can live by it because that'll get you plumbed to the portals of glory. Every once in a while in the jail, and I've told this before, but those guys, you know, I'll be talking to them about the Lord. And I can tell that they just zoned out on me. Just went. So I'll stop right quick. I said, you know what? If you're running 75 down the road in your car and jumped out, it skin you up. I said, Boy, it sure would. I'm going to tell you what, friends, if you miss what this Bible says, it's going to do more than skin you up. It's going to be an eternity and eternity and eternity in the wrong place. And Jesus' blood is on the ground, not to damn you to hell, but to get you to heaven. He loves you so much. And that's why the word is written line upon line and precept upon precept. You may hate it when it gets a hold of you and tears at your heart and brings conviction. But if you get out on your knees and ask God to forgive you, you'll love. You'll love God talking to you. Jesus said, them that I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Amen. I will tell you, I've pastored for a long time and I live in repentance. Lord, sometimes I go to bed before I go to bed and say, Lord, if I've done anything, ain't right. Take care of me. <laughs> Woo, forgive me. I want to be right with Jesus. I even asked my wife two or three times in the 40 years we've been married to forgive me. Somebody shout out <laughs> Well, maybe more than that. <laughs> Verse number nine, the king of Israel called an officer, this is Ahab, he called an officer and said, hasten thither Micaiah the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah said each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the void, in the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. So while they go fetch Micaiah, which is down wherever, down by the brook or somewhere, they run to get him. These 400 prophets, man, they're strutting their stuff. They're telling They've all, they've all zoned in together and one of them has made him a set of horns out of, out of iron. And he's saying, with these horns, you're going to push that old king back. Man. Sounds good. <clears throat> Look at verse 11. And Zedekiah, the son of Chinana, whoo, made him horns of iron and said, thus said the Lord, with these Shalt thou push the Syrians and thou until thou have consumed them? And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prophet for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. Man, they're having them a shindig. Except for Jehoshaphat, he still wanting to see what Micaiah's got to say. Woo! And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Now he's got down there where the prophet lives, this messenger has. And he tells him, he says, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king. 
with one mouth. There's 400 of them, and every one of them is saying the same thing. They're saying, you do good, Ahab. You go up, you win the battle, you come back. It's going to be wonderful. God's given the Syrians into your hand. Be like the word of one of them and speak that which is good. Please, Micaiah, don't say nothing else. Just say what they're saying. That's the voice of our world today. You know why? Itching ears hate truth. They want to hear the good. They don't want to hear the bad. And Micaiah said, as the Lord lived, this is verse 14, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, go. He didn't say, thus said the Lord. He said, get after it. Go prosper. For the Lord shall deliver into the hand of the king. Well, it kind of made the king mad. Verse 16, Ahab, he said, and the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? Micaiah, don't you say a word unless you say, thus saith the Lord. Mm. And he said... I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, hear thou, therefore, this is Micaiah talking again, the prophet Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall? That means die at Ramoth Gilead. And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, With Wherewith? How are you going to do it? He said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. Don't you know them 400 prophets are enjoying this little testimony? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these, that, all these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Chenina, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said unto him, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son. And say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison. Feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I wouldn't have went with him then. And the king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead, and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put on your robes. Boy, he's crazy, ain't he? And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle, but the king of Syria commanded his 30 and two captains that had ruled over his chariot, saying, Fight neither with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel, and they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. <laughs> Don't kill me. I'm not Ahab. <laughs> Woo! Boy, the heat's turned up, ain't it? Two more verses. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel that they turned back from pursuing him. So by the grace of God, Jehoshaphat was saved. But look at verse number 34. Micaiah, Micaiah has prophesied the word of the Lord against 400 prophets that this man, Ahab, would not come back. Look at the writing here in verse number 34. And a certain man drew a bow, bow at venture. He'd just stand out there somewhere in the battle. He just rares back, pulls his bow all the way back like that. 
and he turns the arrow loose and the Holy Ghost guides it right into the harness into the back of Ahab. And he smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness wherefore he said unto the driver of the chariot turn thine hand and carry me out of the host for I am wounded. Each and ears hate truth. Here's a great warning from God in this passage of scripture. In verse number three, he said, the time will come. They will not endure sound doctrine. Ahab lived his whole life, Ahab and Jezebel, running over God's way, God's people, God's things. They tore down everything they could. They loved to hear those words, you're doing good. They did not want truth. And friends, truth bites at us. But listen, truth sets us free. What does he say in John chapter 8, verse 32? You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It doesn't bind you, it sets you free. It releases you. There's <clears throat> a warning. In time of a cultural invasion, grade everything by the word of God. In time of a cultural invasion, grade everything by the word of God. Get your Bible out. If they call you a Bible thumper, jump up and down and shout and roll on the ground and say, I want you to know I believe what the Bible says. I bought into what God says over what man says. Man is so dumb, it can't find which bathroom to go to. God, come on, somebody help me now. God, give us some holy wisdom that itching ears, itch ears hate truth, but we're, we're taking a different road. In a time of cultural invasion, grade everything by the word of God. Biblical illiteracy is at its perfect high. Friends, if ever there was a time to learn Jesus, learn him now, find God. Ignorance has always been man's worst enemy. Jesus said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. We need to hear what God's got to say. One man, Micaiah, said by the word of the Lord, if you go, you won't come back. 400 said by their own word, you will come back. And they lied. Friends, hell is full of people that got misdirected. You can't read through Isaiah and Jeremiah without running on to over and over that my prophets are lying and my, my pastors are, are muddying the water. And I mean, just one, one count after another where truth is not being spoken. And so in this time of cultural invasion, great everything by the word of God. The question that we should ask, who am I more inclined to believe? Someone that says what I want to hear or God that speaks nothing but truth. God sets us free, friends. He calls our sin out. He looks us right in the face. He says, I love you. This here is not a good way to go. Let me help you turn around and get out of here. I love what one preacher said years ago. He said, if you're going down the road and you turn down into a blind alley or a dead end street, he said, Put it in reverse and back out. If you've started down something that you realize it's not working, back out of that thing. Get back up on the road of righteousness and don't listen. Don't listen to that itching ear feed and said, Lord, I don't want to go down there. Itching ears means careless hearers. People that want it any way it can come as long as it's good, as long as it sounds good, regardless of the outcome in the long run. In the day that you and... Uh, the Lord said it to, to Eve, in the day that you eat thereof, Adam and Eve, in the day that you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. I don't know how long they waited before that come to pass, but here it came right into their life. <clears throat> in Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 to 9, God talks to Cain in a very, very precious way. Cain is struggling. He's offered a sacrifice. He knew, he knew the sacrifice wasn't right because without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sins. But his garden was so good, he brought tomatoes. How many likes tomatoes? Yeah. Me too. Especially if they're right off the vine and big old, whoo. <laughs> tomatoes. He brought some, all, all the stuff out of his garden. Maybe a watermelon, some cantaloupe. Turnip, corn, big old, he brings it out there and he offers that as a gift to God. And the Lord, the Bible says the Lord had no respect to his gift. 
Because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Abel, he brings an offering from his flock, a sacrifice, and gives unto the Lord. And the Lord had respect to his. Go there with me for just a moment to Genesis. Genesis chapter 4, we'll look just a moment at this where God talks to him. I <clears throat> In the process of time, it came to pass, it came, brought of the fruit of the ground, an offering unto the Lord. Look at verse number four. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his frock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. You know why? He wanted the Lord to pat him on the back for doing wrong. And God said, I can't do it. I'm not mad at you. I love you. Look at this next verse. If thou doest well, this is God talking to him. He hasn't killed Abel yet. He's just dealing with this puffed up spirit. He's angry. He's ready, to, he's ready to run from the altar instead of to it. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, there's a reason for it. Sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. He said he's not trying to one up you. Abel loves you as, his old, as your older brother. You're, you're always going to be the leader. You're, you, don't have to, you don't have to be jealous over him. All you need to do, Cain, is go back and do what you know is right. Don't offer the, out of your garden. If you have to go buy a lamb from your brother, get you one, but bring it down here and sacrifice it, and I'll have respect to that blood sacrifice. Look at verse number 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. God comes back and talks to him in verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? Look at 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 12. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's 1 John chapter 3 verse number 12. Cain, you can tell Cain did not like to hear what God said. And I'm talking to you about in a time of cultural invasion, great everything by the word of God. God talked to Cain. Cain did not have to go to hell. Cain did not have to be put away from mankind, but his choice. Look at this writer here. This is way over in the New Testament, still talking about this man. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Who is the wicked one? That's the devil. The devil said, it's okay. You don't have to offer no blood. The devil said you can eat the fruit off the tree of knowledge too, but he lied. He lied to Cain and Cain heard it and look what's happening now. Not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew him? Why in the world would he kill his own brother? That's what the question is. Because his own works were evil and his brother's was righteous. Woo! God calls it just like it is, friends, and the reason he does, he wants to clean us up. Man, I don't know if you've ever had blood pulled on you or not, but when they, when they done mine a long time ago, I was, hoping, I, was hoping, I was hoping they wouldn't find nothing. Why? And they come back after, I don't know, a few days, they'd done the test on it and said, well, you're, you're all right. You never know, do you? Why does that, what's in the blood that comes out? I mean, they can look it over. You think God's not, because his own works were evil and his brother's was righteous, itching. It's that restless feeling, that desire and a hankering to hear something even though you know it's a lie, you want to hear it that way. And friends, it could happen to a preacher or it could happen to you or anybody. The devil's always talking. The other, other evening that's talking about the devil's about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, but you don't have to listen to him. You don't have to listen to them 400 that's saying, okay, you deserve it. It's yours for the taking. God said, get away from that. Isaiah, pastors of scary church, Isaiah chapter 30. If you look at this passage of scripture with me, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number 8. I said, Isaiah's pastor in a scary church. Woo! Look what it says here. Isaiah 30, verse number 8. Now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for a time to come forever and ever. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Which say to the seer, see not unto the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. 
prophesy deceits. What did he say in verse number three? For the time will come, they will not endure what sound doctrine? What do they want? Smooth things. Prophecy of deceit. We're living in a culture, friends, that's kind of went exotic in the Pentecostal rank. They want to live off of personal prophecy. You just come and tell me which watermelon I need to buy? Help me. Yeah. I love what Brother Clinton said several years ago. He said, a man come to him and he said, this boy, this boy's a man of God. He's talking about a man he'd heard preaching. He'd come, he'd come to Brother Clinton and he's bragging on this guy. He said, this guy's a man of God. He said, I went to his church. He didn't know me and he, he called me out and told me my phone number. <coughs> He said, but if you don't know your own phone number, you need to get you a book. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> if he calls you out and calls you sin to order, you know that's from God right there. Whoa, look at verse number 11 of the same passage. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Friends, that is the scream of our world today. We don't want to hear the Bible. We don't want to hear the preaching. We don't want to hear about God. Get out of the way. Let us do our own thing. But our hope, the hope of going to heaven is right here. So great everything in your life over what the Bible has got to say. The second thing I want to talk to you about for just a few moments is let every declaration be Bible based. If you're going to declare something, declare it out of the word of God. What the Bible says. Verse number two of our text in 2 Timothy chapter four and verse number two says, preach what? Let your declaration be what? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. If you go back just one chapter to uh, 2 Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16. Look what it says about the scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of who? Of God. And it is profitable. Don't you want to be profitable? What's it profitable for? It's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof. It's profitable for correction. And it's profitable for instruction in righteousness. Man, if you want to profit, why not get on that train and ride it plumb to the portals of glory? Itch and ears hate truth. But then it wants to profit can find the Bible and find the right way and hear the voice of God talking to them. Let every declaration, everything you're going to say, helping people get to heaven, tell them it's Bible-based. Get them to the Word of God. In 1 Kings 22 and 4, 14, Micah said, as the Lord liveth what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. Let us live our heart right there. People need God so bad. We don't want to just have some kind of an opinion. Let every declaration be Bible-based. Take them to the Word of God. Let them find out what Jesus said and make their own decision. Did you know the Scripture says... Work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Wow. Flip over. This is a scripture I just, I just read the other day too. I think it's in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse number two. I'm just reading, reading through there. Man, this scripture just stuck out to me. I know I probably read it last week too. I don't know, but it said, look, this is so precious. For all those things hath mine hand made and all those things have been saith the Lord, but to this man will I look. The man that's got a million dollars in the bank. The man that's got the new house. The man that's got children. And job. Look what it says. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is what? Poor. He's not talking about poor monetarily. He's talking about that spirit of humility. And of a contrite spirit. And this next word, boy, it just stuck in my heart. And trembleth at my word. Woo! Let every declaration you make, if you're talking to your children or your grandchildren or your husband or your wife or your friends, tell them what the Bible says because right there it brings hope into their life and it brings joy. I was telling last week in the jail, so this has been several years ago, but I, I come in and, and the jailer, when I walked in the room, he told me, he said, Danny, he said, we got a guy here trying to kill himself. A young man, he's about 20, he said he killed his cousin last night in the front yard. They was fighting, they'd been on pot, smoking pot, 
and they got in a fight out in the front yard and uh, one of them got loose from the oven, run into the house. Just inside the door, there was a shotgun. He grabbed the gun and as his cousin was coming after him, he raised it up and killed him right there on the spot. Of course, they, they put him in the jailhouse. When I got there, he said, there is no hope for me. I don't need no trial, nothing. Let me die. I mean, when he got off the dope, he just went zoom. He said, I'm going to kill. So they put him in a padded cell and everything. They're trying to keep him from hanging himself with his own clothes or whatever. He just went zoomed out. The jailer, when I got there, he said, I, I don't know what to do. He said, would you go talk to him? I said, you better believe it. I'd be proud to. Man, I, I went in there with my Bible, not in the room with him, but they opened the little door where I could see him and talk to him. And he, he looked at me and he said, there, there is no hope for me. You don't need to be here. I said, could I tell you about another man that killed Christians and God saved him? And we started reading Acts chapter 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter. Whew, he headed for Damascus with letters from the high priest to kill everybody that calls on this name. But somebody met him. And friends, it was the word of God, Jesus Christ, when his mouth opened and spoke into that man's heart. You talk about chains. And that boy goes from killing himself to having hope that I, could, I need to pay for my debt. I need to go to the penal institution, maybe even the death sentence. But I can go knowing that Jesus is willing to save me. Friends, there is real truth for real trouble. And that truth comes from God Almighty. We have hope in him. So hang on to what the Bible's got to say like Micaiah did. He was living in a rough time. The Bible does not say, as far as I know, anything else about this prophet. They probably killed him in that deal. But he's willing to die for what, what, what the scripture said. In Matthew chapter 10, verse number 22, <clears throat> the Bible says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. If you live by the Bible, people's not going to like a lot of the stuff you believe. That's okay. Just love them anyway. Some of them's going to come over in times of trouble and they're going to find the hope that they need in Jesus. And what you want to do is have your arms open and say, man, you don't have to like me. Just come and find the Lord as your Savior and let me help you get to the portals of glory. In Matthew chapter 7, verse number 24, he says the people that hears this word and does it are wise men. In verse number 26, the people that hears this word and don't do it are fools. Yeah. Woo! That is a pretty powerful statement. Amos chapter 7, they run him off. <clears throat> the high priest there tells Amos, we don't want to hear from you. Amaziah is his name. He's at Bethel. And Jeroboam is the king, a very wicked person. And he tells on Amos and says, this man is speaking against you and against your kingdom and we can't, we can't hold up under this barrage of prophecy that's all turned down. And Zedekiah goes to him and said, you get out of here. Don't you prophesy in Bethel anymore. Go back to Judah. But friends, I'm not going to read the rest of the verse to you. Well, okay, I will then. <laughs> Look at verse 16 and 17. Now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. He's talking to this, this false prophet, priest, Amaziah. Hear the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his hand, of this land. And friends, exactly what that man prophesied came to pass. Why? Because it wasn't itching ear stuff, friends. It was the word of God. It was the truth, and it changed their lives. I am going to close with this. In John chapter 12, in verse number 46. Here is a reason, a reason to hang on to what God has spoke to you and to hear what he's saying. In a time of cultural in invasion, grade everything by the word of God and let every declaration be Bible-based. Those are the two points. Look what he says. This is Jesus talking in St. John. St. John, this is New Testament now, verse number 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. 
So if we stopped right there, you would say the Bible doesn't mean nothing and God's word means nothing. Even Jesus said, if you don't believe my word, I don't judge you. Go ahead. But look at verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Friends, you must know that we're getting close to the end of time. I know no man knows the day or the hour, but I'm telling you, the Lord said in the last day that people would have itching ears. They heap to themselves teachers that will speak to them smooth things that they would not endure sound doctrine. And he said, in that climate, I've got one thing to say to you. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all doctrine and long suffering. Friends, there is still hope for our world today. There is hope for America. There's hope for your marriage. There's hope for your family. There's hope for your children. Children, there's victory in your community if you'll go back and do what God says. Woo! Hallelujah! And build on the unaltered word of truth. And we're going to meet our judge. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. I want to be right what the book says. And then when we get up there, he'll say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Would you stand with me this morning?